Yeah, the most time the pilot said, and the most good, and we know the pilot said, it gives an idea of our response rate. A lot of times the response rate that we have in this part of the world is a lot less than we hope for, and that's just a reality. Mm -hmm. The procedure, how do you go down the incident, how will it be collected? You see, I'm a, I was telling my man, I email and the man will get back to me and analyze it. You send out 100 emails, they get back five. Yeah, what do you do? Go in again, you see, and I come back here next year to redo your yeah, thesis. No, because you didn't follow the procedures correctly. You've got to know exactly what you do from the get go. The instruments. You need to describe the instruments. Validation. Sorry, that's double. Reliability, objectivity, even practicality. And I think we need that on Thursday. That you've got to understand that it needs to be valid. Your tool needs to measure what it means to measure. A lot of times, the tools are nice tools for other people, but it's just not for your people. <coughs> it needs to be reliable. Therefore, you judge that to the extent to which it can be duplicated with similar results. Not exact, but similar. And again, even in the real world, we find that. So somebody does a study, the client doesn't like the study, the client then may employ us to redo it, and it's a complete different result. That's not possible. If it was properly done from the beginning. Data treatment. How do you do it? In the old days, before SPSS and such tools, we had, when I was doing undergrad, I did something about education. Um, I think it's in Barbados and Trinidad and Tobago. We used to use Bristol board. You remember Bristol board? Yeah. And you draw some long, long, long line. And tick one answer. Answer one, tick. Tick two, tick, tick. And you go down. Mm -hmm. Then you consult it. You have somebody else look at it, read it. Then you have a third person to verify that the correct number, and then you start. It's easier for you. You enter into your program. And it spits out the data for you. It takes a lot of the labor out of it. But what it also does is give you an idea different comparisons or different levels of analysis in the exact same data. Does that make sense? And that's important. But you need to know that up front. Depending on what you study, you will do different qualitative and one thing, qualitative one thing, if you do mixed classes one thing, you gotta figure that out up front. Data analysis. Describe how to analyze the data. How do you do it? Um, to me, I try to advise students, what is the advantage of doing that program <coughs> apart from another? Because some people love SPSS, some people love starter, some people, yeah, there's so many programs out there, depending on what you can afford or what the institute has. Why do you choose the program that you're using? And another thing I advise people to do, if you, when you read the people you read, and you want to model your study after this, when you take from them, see what procedure they use, that can inform how you're going to do it. In other words, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. You waste a lot of time, and get a lot of heart to that. With some research, there are ethical considerations, um, from what I've seen here, not many people have um, issues with ethical solutions, but they are. Um, if you read any work um, done in social sciences from Latin America, Europe, states and stuff, the ethical considerations are not research. There are procedures, there are, there, are, there are methods that you have to use to ensure that once you publish your work, it's ethical, otherwise nobody will take and of course, at the end, your conclusion, which again I said is different from your abstract. So we look at the methodology, and a study of methods. Provide a description and analysis of the method or methods that you use. And again, if you can read a lot of theses, you will find that the methodology page is normally one page. Well, I, you know, I'm going to talk to some people up in so and so and so and so and they will tell me what they're doing. Bam! That's the methodology. That's not a method. You've got to highlight the strengths and limitations. And again, in other words, you want to see why you're using this method to collect the data as opposed to other methods. But if you haven't read anybody, you don't know the different methods that people do to arrive at their conclusion. Um, again, provide the basis for clarifying the methods. 